This is chapter four, part two. In this lesson, we will learn about stem and leaf plot. A stem and leaf plot is another way to display a relatively small numerical data set. In a stem and leaf plot, the stem is the first part of the number and the leaf is the last part of the number. For example, we have freshman male weights here. And in this, we would make the tens part be the stem and the um, ones part be the leaf. When you make a stem and leaf plot, the numbers to the left of the line are the stems and the numbers to the right of the line are the leaves. You must include a key, which is what we have down here on the bottom, and you must include a label or a title, which is what we have up here at the top. The leaves should be single digit with no commas. So this section here, that represents 130 pounds, 132 pounds, and 139 pounds. No commas between the digits. It's best if the leaves are in numerical order, but it is not required that they be in order. And when you get done making your stem and leaf plot, the stem plots will look very similar to a dot plot or a histogram of the same data. The advantage to the stem plot, though, is that it preserves the individual data values so that we know this person weighed 97 pounds instead of wondering, is it 95 pounds, is it 98 pounds? Another thing we can do with stem plots is make back-to-back -back stem plots. These are useful when we want to compare distributions. For example, we have female weights here. If we add the female weights to the male weights, we could compare the female to the male. So what we would do is put another line here and we would put the female weights to the left of the line and the male weights would then be on the right of the line and then we could compare. Okay, if we do that, we would have to include in the title that this is female and male weights. And we would have to include in our key that we have um, things on each side. So 147 would be male weights and 142 would be the pounds for females. Another thing we can do with stem and leaf plots is we can make split stem plots. So first thing we want to do is take these body temperatures, make the... Um, the tens and the ones be the stem and make the decimal point be the um, leaves. So you press pause and give it a try and the answers will appear in a moment. Okay, so here we just have a regular stem and leaf plot of body temperatures and you can see how the numbers fall out. But sometimes when the data is very compact like it is here, it's best if you split the stem. When you split the stem, you have each of your stem values twice, so we would have 96 two times, 97 two times, and on down the line. When you have it two times, you're going to have a low and a high, so um, we can even label this. These will be the low values and the high values. Then the low values would go from 96.0 to 96.4, and the high values would go from 96.5 to 96.9. So in a moment, the rest of these stems will appear. Okay, so we have all of our stems, and then we can just put in the leaves, making sure that the low is from 0 to 4 and the high is from 5 to 9. Those answers will appear in a moment. And with the split stem, then, you can see that there is this big gap in here so this 96.3 is an unusual value. And of course, don't forget to put on your key so we can put 96L slash 3 equals 96.3 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so that's a split stem. It's useful when the data is very compact and you want to spread it out. Okay, another thing you can do is truncate your data. You would truncate your data when your data is very spread out and you want to um, condense it some more. So it's exactly the opposite of the split stem. 
When you truncate the data, what you do is you just chop off the ending part that you don't want. So these grocery bills then become $10, $13, $15, $15, and you forget about the change. You don't even round it up to the nearest dollar. You just chop it off, and you make your um, truncated stem plot. And then that makes it easier to see um, to the nearest dollar how much you're spending.